Suppose Mr. Modi, when he returns, were to pick up the phone and say, Bimila Koijan, come and give me your advice. You're a Manipuri, you're an MP from inner Manipur, you understand that state. Give me your advice, what should I be doing? What would be the top three, four measures you would suggest to him? First, make sure that his government in Manipur and his ruling party and ruling alliance members in the assembly speak in one voice to ensure that the institution like the army, the Manipur police and the uh, paramilitary has the trust of the people and crack down on the violence, rein in the violence. That's the thing that I've been saying. Third, he must categorically deny that violence cannot be a means uh, to demand political issues uh, as well as you must deny that no sectarian based political demand will be entertained. Fourth, he should form a committee of prominent citizens across the country and, and members from our state to have a, a sort of a civilian and, and civil society dialogue. Hi, I'm Karan Thapar. Over the last few years, I hope you've been watching my program, The Interview on The Wire. During that period, I've interviewed doctors, politicians, businessmen, scientists, authors, and even the occasional Nobel laureate. For me, it's been exciting. I hope it's been enjoyable for you. But these, as you know, are tough times. And if this program is going to remain bold, independent, and sometimes even defiant, then I think we need your support. At the end of the day, it's a truism, but editorial independence is best defended by the viewers. So if you would like this program to remain the way it is, forthright, outspoken, and interesting, then would you consider supporting us? All you have to do is to click on the description at the bottom. But more than anything else, I hope you will continue to watch the interview. Your viewership means an awful lot to me. Hello and welcome to a special interview for The Wire. With Manipur once again engulfed in violence, the Congress party has demanded that Home Minister Amit Shah and Chief Minister Biren Singh resign. It's also called for the Prime Minister to visit Manipur and meet an all-party delegation from the state before Parliament convenes on November the 25th. But more importantly, what steps does the party believe the government should take to restore peace and then proceed to resolve the situation in Manipur? Those are the key issues I shall put today to the Congress Party's MP for Inner Manipur and a professor of sociology at Jawaharlal Nehru University in Delhi, Bimur Akhoijam. Professor Akhoijam, let's start with the sudden eruption of violence in Manipur. According to the Hindu, in the last 13 days, 22 people have been killed. According to the Times of India, 13 homes of ministers and MLAs have been attacked. In addition, vehicles have been destroyed, Hamar churches vandalized and shops burnt. After weeks, if not months of relative calm, why is this happening? No, this is the very nature of the, the crisis that we have been going through. If people don't understand, then they will take it as if it is a surprise aspect of the crisis that Manipur has been going through for the last 18 months. In other words, violence has never gone away. It's only an impression that people have and a false impression that there yeah. was calm and peace. That this violence is a manifestation of a crisis. Now, yesterday... I interviewed Pauline Dial Haukepa, BJP Kuki MLA, who called the situation in Manipur civil war, with both sides viciously retaliating against each other and unconcerned about the innocent people killed. To what extent do you agree with that description that this is a civil war? You know, I, I said I have always used this word civil war like situations right from the day one. I have described that the Indian state has allowed. Uh, a civil war-like situation and, and to call it a civil war, it is a slap on, on, on this country with the fifth largest economy and the fourth largest uh, military, the largest democracies, to, to call something as absolutely a civil war. But I've already said civil war-like. I'm trying to be, uh, you know, a little uh, concerned about the uh, fate of the Indian state. 
because you, you can't have a civil war in established democracy. But it is definitely like a civil war. In response to the deteriorating situation, curfew was declared in Imphal and the internet suspended. Before that, AFSPA was declared in six police station areas in the valley and overall, altogether, an additional 7,500 troops have been sent to Manipur. As the MP for Inner Manipur, how do you evaluate this response? This is a reflection of the error attitudes or approach, as well as the insincerity and lack of uh, political will to resolve the crisis. Nothing else. Are you saying that this is the wrong response? Yeah, obvious. That's that's good. Can you but explain this, why? This, must be the, this must be the right approach for the government of India, but for any sensible person, they will, they will say that this is a wrong. But I think the right or wrong has collapsed for the Indian state as far as Manipur is concerned. Can you explain why declaration of curfew, suspending the internet, and more importantly... You see, see what they have been wrong. doing is a knee-jerk reaction. That's what I said, ad hoc is you don't, you don't approach a serious a crisis as this one with that ad hoc attitude. There must be a comprehensive and decisive action. They are telling lies. Lies after lies. For instance, they said APSPA will resolve this issue. In their notification, they said it is for effective coordination of the armed forces or security agencies. They are bluffing the people of the country as a whole because APSPA operated area violence has happened. Villages have been wiped out, people have been killed. Chura Champur Mori is under APSPA. Did it help? And there is for effective coordination of uh, the armed forces and security agencies, including in intelligence. State police, central armed police, armed forces, paramilitary, you have something called unified headquarters. And the mandate was to take care of the law and order situation as well as security. If that, if that institutional mechanism as well as OPSPA did not help, what makes them believe that this will help? This is more like an anticipated response from the valley uh, areas to a uh, potentially, uh, uh, you know, I think the government of India is already aware that they abducted. Uh, women and children would be slaughtered. And that's why they were trying to preempt possible, uh, you know, retaliatory actions from uh, the, the valley. It seems to me it's more like that. So your position is that we have a near or like civil war situation, but the government's responses to quote your language are knee jerk and ad hoc and inadequate and wrong. In other words, this is a government that simply doesn't know what it's doing. No, yeah, I, I suspect that they know it. That's what I've been saying, that it is, it is not that they don't know. You mean it's you know, deliberate? I, 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 let, 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 let me put it this way. Manipur, the people of the state, has been drilling under uh, a belligerent uh, you know, and disintegrationist assault. It's a, it's a deadly assault by disintegrationist and communal forces in collusion with something like a Machiavellian instrumentality of uh, certain people who runs the state. It is a combined, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, and a concerted effort of these forces that have tried to destroy and divide the society on the line of parochial identities, stalking passion, so that uh, so as to end. Uh, your su your suggest. I think you're frozen. Chief. I'll pick up from where we were because the screen broke and you disappeared. You're suggesting that this government is deliberately mishandling the situation. It knows what that what it's doing is wrong, knee-jerk and ad hoc, and yet it's continuing to do it. This is deliberate mishandling. You, this is what I'm saying that, you know, as far as I understand the situation, as someone who have observed the polity and society, uh, not only in terms of global and this country, but more particularly India's Northeast, this is a fact as far as my assessment is concerned uh, that uh, that the people of the Manipur has uh, have been reeling under uh, a deadly assault uh, by disintegrationist communal forces in collusion with uh, Machiavellian uh, rationality of those people who run the state uh, to achieve certain parochial uh, you know projects based on identity and for some mandarins some strategic goals. Uh, if if it is not for this collusion, uh, this violence would have stopped long time back. 
Now, on Monday, your party, the Congress party, called for the resignation of the Home Minister as well as the Chief Minister. You know and I know there's probably no chance of that happening whatsoever. So when they refuse to budge, when they refuse to resign, what next? You know, this is, that's what I said. You know, uh, for, for a political party uh, who talks about civilizational values and Ras Dharma, if this particular appeal of an ethical and moral appeal, if it doesn't affect them, then I think the rest of the country must think what kind of uh, you know, government, what kind of a political culture we have today in this country. No doubt the rest of the country will think if they don't resign, but what does that leave Manipur? If they don't resign, what's the next step for Manipur? I think that's why the people of the state will increasingly think about uh, what is his relationship with India? Yesterday, Congress President Malik Arjun Kharge asked the president to intervene. Is your party now of the view that we need to declare president's rule and that Manipur should be brought directly under the control of Delhi? You know, as far as I've expressed these opinions, we are still conflating issues. Um, my CLP leader and former Chief Minister of Manipur have expressed in a press conference. You know, when you say about precedent rules, that must be accompanied with the full awareness that it is the government of India who is playing and complicit in this whole crisis. On the floor of the House, uh, our uh, Union Home Minister has said that the CM is cooperating. You have a classic example uh, that Manipur is the only state where the central government imposes APSPA in certain areas and the state government imposes APSPA in another area. This is the only unique. It doesn't happen in Kashmir. It doesn't happen in Nagaland or elsewhere. It is only in Manipur. So who's calling shots in Manipur? Is it the state government or is is, is the union government? That clarity, I, you know, we should have it for the country. I have said it, if you recollect, in my first uh, interview with you last year, I have suggested that there is an erosion of federal structure. It may be Manipur today, and it can be anywhere else in the country. Remember that Ambedkar has said the law and order but can I interrupt? is a stop. Can I interrupt? Will declaring, president's rule, will declaring president's rule give you the clarity you want? Is that what you're hoping will be the, the result? No, I, I think this, this should be done only when the rest of the country knows that the government of India is involved. So if there is, it, is, it is not recognized, if it is not uh, affirmed first, then it will give an excuse and you will, you will have an escape goat. Who is but then willing what does your party again? president mean when he's called upon the president to intervene? If it's not declaring president's rule, what else it is, it is for the president to It is for the presidents to clarify. You what is the situation in Manipur and ask this government, in our government, the government of India, to behave. So don't read it necessarily only as the president rule. My, my, my idea is that the president as the constituent of the constitution, I, I think it is important uh, for, for the president uh, to, to save the constitutional propriety uh, or, and uh, so that we can lead a civilized and lawful life in this country. The issue is not Manipur here. The issue is how the Indian state operates. How does our constitution function? That's the fundamental Therefore, issue. Before we get into abstractions, which will be difficult for the audience to follow, please relate what you're saying specifically to Manipur. You're saying that when Mr. Kharge called upon president to intervene, he wasn't asking for president's rule to be declared. You personally believe this is not the right time for that. We need clarity before that happens. Instead, he wanted a better, clearer understanding of what was happening from the president. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's, a, that's, that's the position. If, if, if that clarity is there, what is needful constitutionally, it should be carried out. Your party has also called for the Prime Minister to visit Manipur and address an all-party delegation from the state before Parliament convenes on the 25th, which is just five days' time. Now, he's out of the country and the Prime Minister won't return to the 22nd, which leaves him three days to do what you're asking. Clearly, he's not going to manage. So... Will you be raising this issue forcefully when Parliament convenes on the 25th? 
do not defend him by saying that he won't do it, he won't have time. If he has the will and, and, and uh, sincerity and intention, he would have done it a long time back and he, he can still change it within 24 hours. Forget about three days. And if he doesn't go, then what? Then what? I we will still continue to remind the country and, and, and through the parliament or outside the parliament that how this government of India has been complicit uh, in this crisis through its inactions or and 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 what can be sometimes referred to as a deliberate and dubious way of handling the crisis. Will the Congress Party and more importantly, will you in particular raise this in a big way when Parliament convenes on the twenty? I don't know whether it is a big way or not. As a member of Parliament, whether I come from a state with uh, two MPs in Lok Sabha or AT MPs, an MP is an MP. And 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 uh, not nobody is less or, or more. And I have I, I have been sent by my people uh, to be a, a representative. So I have to raise this not only as 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 a representative of my people in that state, but also for the entire country, who 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 must have been offended by what is going on in the state of Manipur as a part of this union. I don't know about the rest of the other citizens who don't uh, you know bother about. Uh, the the uh, you know happenings in Manipur, but as far as uh, the citizen in this country who are offended uh, 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 with with the things that has been going on, I will be voicing as their representative on the floor of the house if I get a chance. If I recall correctly, during the last session of Parliament, your opportunity to speak was delayed and de deliberately denied for a long time, and eventually you spoke to almost an empty house. How can you ensure that? Parliament actually gives you the right to be heard by everyone because this is a crisis the country faces and you're voicing the interests of the voice of the people of Manipur. How could you ensure that Parliament is there to listen to you? Uh, Karan, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just reminding you, I am going to speak not only as a person from Manipur, I'm going to speak as a people's representative on the floor of the house. Indian Parliament. I represent Indian citizens who are worried and who do not exclude Manipur issue as if this is not a national issue. This is a peripheral, marginal, border state. That mentality, I am not representing those people, but I am representing the citizens of the country who gets offended with something that happened in Manipur and who think that what happened in Manipur is a national issue. I'll be representing those people, first of all. If the Indian parliament in our parliament doesn't have that particular sensibility, as the, the way you are asking the questions, I wonder that the parliament would do to me. Are you a little disillusioned with the way parliament responds to the Manipur issue? Does it give it the importance, the critical importance it deserves? Uh, I wouldn't say that. You know, my party leader, uh, Rahulji, spoke. A uh, member of other political party from Trinamul, uh, uh, you know, Mawazi spoke. So do many other uh, party members cutting across party lines uh, from from Kerala to uh, Bengal and from various places from Ariana. People have spoke out. Uh, so I think as people's representative, uh, uh, at least uh, you know certain political parties uh, representatives are doing that. So I think uh, you can't quite brush aside uh, the parliament. Uh, on, on the Manipur issue in that fashion. Let's broaden our discussion a little. Suppose Mr. Modi, when he returns, were to pick up the phone and say, Bimila Koijan, come and give me your advice. You're a Manipuri, you're an MP from inner Manipur, you understand that state. Give me your advice. What should I be doing? What would be the top three, four measures you would suggest to him? I have been repeating this at Nossum almost now for 18 months. Many people have asked, it is on record, but I'm still repeating it again. First thing first, call all his members of his party in the Manipur Legislative Assembly. Starting with his cabinet ministers, council of ministers, there are two cookie, uh, you know, MLS, uh, MLS from representing, uh, you know, from the cookie communities. They have been demanding UT and separate administration. And the rest of the cabinet seemingly is against that. So the government is speaking in two voices. If the society is splitted, if the government itself is splitted, what do you expect that government to do? 
and so far as they are sustaining their own party's regime in Manipur, the Prime Minister must call all his council of ministers in Manipur, along with the other members of his uh, ruling alliance, and tell them to sit down and make sure that they speak in one language. Number two, make sure that the violence is retained. There has been a lot of distress on armed forces, including the Indian Army, Manipur State Police, and paramilitary forces like Assam Rifle. That means you have been allowing the erosion of the basic trust that these institutions should have for a functioning republic and democratic order. And these two things should be ensured. Third, he should categorically announce that there could be no political demand based on sectarian, communal, divisive, and disintegrationist premise. Fourth, he must ensure that prominent citizens from across the country, along with prominent citizens from the region as well as the state, must form a committee in order to have a dialogue, not a negotiation. Professor Koitam, are you there? Yeah, I have said four. First, make sure that his government in Manipur and his ruling party and ruling alliance members in the assembly speak in one voice to ensure that the institution like the army, the Manipur police and the uh, paramilitary has the trust of the people and crack down on the violence, rein in the violence. That's the thing that I've been saying. Third, he must categorically deny that violence cannot be a means uh, to demand political issues, uh, as well as you must deny that no sectarian based political demand will be entertained. Fourth, he should form a committee of prominent citizens across the country and, and members from our state to have a, a sort of a civilian and, and civil society dialogue, not negotiation. I understand that, but you're coming up against a demand unanimously made by Kukis, not just by Kuki MLAs, although they're at the forefront of making it, but by, it seems, the entire Kuki community that they want a separate administration, which they interpret to be union territory status with its own legislature. How do you respond to that? Because your third I, I, so first of all, first of them, all and I they're insisting on it. Uh, you know, current, first of all, uh, you as a journalist should not assume that their demand represents the entire community, just as one should not demonize an entire community. This is politics. This is a political demand uh, representing certain interests. So do not think that the entire community, uh, the cookies, want to destroy money. How confident are you? How confident are you of that point? Tell I, me, how confident are you that the entire? No, I am saying that because I, I come from. I come from that state and I know people, how the voices have been silenced. It could be from either community, from the Maitais as well as any other communities. The certain voices have always been silenced and unfortunately, media houses and the way you frame makes it as if there is a concrete, compact, absolute voice, separated Maitai voice and Kuki voice. I think we should not be trapped into that. So, and two point, you know, uh, in this country, there are multiple uh, speakers of languages, religions, cultures. And if you keep on dividing this country on those lines, you will be opening a Pandora's box. But the and you must remember can I that, uh, the important let, let, let point me finish. You... Current, 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 let me finish this. You remember that what happened in 1953, how it has spiraled into a particular kind of a reorganization and how the State Reorganization Commission was so cautious in its report in 1955, how not to stop this communal identity-based administrative arrangement. You will be opening a Pandora's box, and Northeast has suffered because of this approach. We have often called it balkanization of the India's Northeast. Can I stop you there for a moment? I think I need to ask you. I think, I think that is the, the, the position that I've taken. It's my yeah, let, me, let me put a question to you. You began by saying that the demand for a separate status, a separate administration is simply the demand of politicians within the Kuki community. How am I confident that the Kukis as a whole support it? How are you confident that they don't? Where do you I get have just said, I have said it don't? is a politics. It is a political demand by certain sections within that community. I am saying that do not, don't call every six as Khalistanis. 
Do not call all Hindus as, you know, sort of Hindu box. Don't call all cookies as part of this game. That is what people want you to be. In a people tweet want you to issue. believe, and this has been articulated at Nossum on media. In I know because I come from that community, Karan, unlike you, I have friends. Mr. Okoyjan, in, in a tweet that he deleted afterwards, but while the tweet was there and available, Mr. Chidambaram, one of the most senior leaders of your party, the Congress, has called for regional autonomy for the Maite, the Kuki and the Naga communities in Manipur. Doesn't that suggest that he personally supports the demand for a separate administration? What else is regional autonomy but separate administration by another name? Uh, you know, first of all, I think I must clarify this. You know, the fact that you have mentioned it, now he has deleted it. It is, and you have also acknowledged that that is Mr. Chidambaram's personal opinion. And I think uh, there is a line of thinking in that process among certain sections of the society and, and, and elites in this country, uh, including, unfortunately, in the so-called mainstream, who is trying to preside over the fate of people in that part of the country. Uh, I have said that... Are you saying Mr. Chidambaram is wrong? Uh, no, I'm, I'm saying that it is his personal opinion. It is right or wrong. It's not a question of right or wrong. But the I do not agree. Opinions matter. He's I do a not... former home minister. He's a former finance but minister. But still, senior Mr. Person. Curran, he is not the government then also. He was a member of the council of minister as a respected, he's a respected figure, not only for our party, but also for our country. But that doesn't necessarily mean that his position is our party's position. Our party's position is very clear that any solution will be based on a consultative process to arrive at a consensus. Uh, as far as the timing of his pause is concerned, you know, I think it is uh, an error of judgment. But as far as the position, I do not agree, as, as well as it is not our party's position. That's very clear. And, and, and that, that is something that I think you must... Uh, Let me get a bit of clarity. You say your party's position is that the solution will be arrived at through a consultative process and it will be a consensus. Does yes, that... agreeable to Let all finish. the sections of the people Let me in the finish. state. Let me finish. Does no, that no, I say, I'm saying this. Does that preclude and exclude separate administration? Cannot a consultative process through consensus agree on it? You know, I, I find it that, that particular given the divergent viewpoints, that's very unlikely. And I, as a person who do not want to make Lebanon out of Manipur, have clearly stated this on many occasions. And our party position, our CLP also said the same thing yesterday, that okay. based on communal and ethnic lines, any thought of arranging political arrangement is will be disastrous, not only for Manipur, but for the entire country. Well, that is what something that the State Reorganization Commission has warned. That's what I was trying to remind you. 1953 to 1955. Absolutely. Please go through it. You made that point. Finally, Kokomi, which is perhaps the prime Mete organization, has demanded that all Sioux groups should be declared unlawful organizations. That, of course, would completely undermine the Sioux agreement, which the central government reached with the Kuki groups. Where do you stand on that? So I'm very clear on this. This dubious. A uh, mechanism of, uh, you know, dealing with the armed groups uh, it needs to be reviewed by the government of India. I'm very clear on this, because you know, you 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 must go and do some groundwork in Manipur. You will know that Manipur is perhaps the only state because of these dubious policies. Texts have been collected on the highways, and uh, and uh, the uh, back of cement, which is available for 300 to 400 rupees in Guwahati, reaches 800 by the time it reaches Imphal. The economy has been destroyed because of these illegal tax collections under the garb of these Sioux or the peace agreement, ceasefire. I think the government of India must have a sincere approach and relook into this dealing with the armed groups through a constitutional mechanism with due respects to people's aspirations. All political grievances and aspirations can be put on table. However, in the name of that, the dubious counterinsurgency policies by deploying or, or popping up one group against another, 
everybody who is aware of Manipur, any journalists, any researchers outside of the Manipur, ask them what has been the policy and how we have normalized my last question and illegal issues and practices question, in Mr. the name Apoja. of this kind of arrangement my last question any member of the kuki community hearing you speak both about their demand for a separate administration as well as your position on the sue groups would say it's impossible for us to reach an agreement with him you've taken such rigid positions on these two issues that the cookies will find it very hard to sit down and talk to you. How do you respond to that? I have to convince them. But first said it, I'm not against cookies as a community. I'm against a particular form of politics. Remember what Gandhi had said. M.K. Gandhi, Gandhiji once said, we are not fighting against the British people. We are fighting against British rule over India. So my position is not against the cookie as a community, but a certain kind of politics and it is for their well-being as well as long as we can find a common ground in this country we can live if this country is going to talk about political separations and demand based on communal identities there will be no end i'm reminding uh, uh, my audience as well as you that it will open the pandora's box northeast india had suffered for a long long time because of this particular ethnicization of politics and balkanization has been a particular issue which we have been kicked off for a long, long time. We must arrest this. That is in our interest, not as the interest of one community, but the entire people of the region as well as the rest of the country. Let's leave it there, Mr. Koyjan. Thank you very much for the time you've given me. Thank you very much for clarifying your views, particularly on those two very important issues. The demand for a separate administration and the demand that the Sioux group understanding and agreements are not in the interest of the nation. Thank you very much indeed. Take care. Stay safe. Hi, I'm Karan Thapar. Over the last few years, I hope you've been watching my program, The Interview on The Wire. During that period, I've interviewed doctors, politicians, businessmen, scientists, authors, and even the occasional Nobel laureate. For me, it's been exciting. I hope it's been enjoyable for you. But these, as you know, are tough times. And if this program is going to remain bold, independent, and sometimes even defiant, then I think we need your support. At the end of the day, it's a truism, but editorial independence is best defended by the viewers. So if you would like this program to remain the way it is, forthright, outspoken, and interesting, then would you consider supporting us? All you have to do is to click on the description at the bottom. But more than anything else, I hope you will continue to watch the interview. Your viewership means an awful lot to me.